Hello everyone, today I'm here to bring you my November wrap up. This month I read seven books, which I think is pretty good because three of the books were very, very big. So I was very worried if I wasn't even gonna get five read. So I'm happy with seven. So I'm gonna share with you all the books that I read, starting with my least favorite to my favorite. Now I do have reviews for a lot of these and I still need to film a review on one of them. So there's gonna be a lot of reviews listed. So they might be a little bit brief because I've already filmed a full length review and I don't wanna repeat myself a ton. So without further ado, Let's get into it. First book I want to talk about is Not the Girl You Marry by Angie J. Christopher. This is a new release that just came out in November. This is kind of like a retelling of How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, which if you don't know, stars Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey, which is a great chick flick. It's not one of my favorites, but I still really enjoy it. So I was very excited to read this one because I thought it was going to be very much like it. And it was, but I just didn't love it. I think this was this author's debut novel, and I think it definitely showed because... The writing just wasn't there for me. It was kind of boring, if I'm honest with you. Like, I just didn't love it. So in this book, we follow a character named Jack, who was a gentleman. He's had all these girlfriends, and is like the perfect boyfriend. And he's been single, and now he has to, like show his boss that he can he can you know be a horrible boyfriend and lose a girl in 10 days then on the flip side we have a character named hannah who is very very good at her job and you know she also wants to show her boss that she can be with a guy and that she can have a long-term relationship very much like the movie only flipped so that's basically what the book is about one thing i really didn't like about it is the fact that i had a dog on the cover but the dog comes literally the last page and i was just like why put the dog on the cover if he's not even gonna be on it i tease us with a dog why why well, wanted the dog to be introduced really early into it. But either way, I give this three out of five. It was okay. I would say, you know, I read a lot of like chick lit, woman's fiction, romance books. Would I say this is like really good one? No, it was okay. I'd say if you read a lot of the genre, check it out. If you're looking for a really standout one, I don't think this one is it, sadly. I wanted more from it. I am hopeful to see what she's going to write in the future, though, because I will definitely check it out because I liked it. I didn't love it. I don't know what else there is to say. <laughs> It, so I'm just gonna move on to the next book. Next book is Get Alive Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I gave this one a four out of five. I really enjoyed this one. This is definitely a very steamy romance chiclet novel that I love. I need to figure out romance chiclet. This is definitely a romance novel, not a chiclet novel. So in this book we follow a character named Chloe who is really secluded with her life. She doesn't do a lot of things because she does suffer from it. She does suffer from fibroma fibromyalgia, hopefully I pronounced that right, which really affects her life because of the toll that it takes on her body. So she really doesn't is adventurous a lot because her body doesn't really allow her to be because of this disease that she has. So basically she writes a list for these 10 things she wants to do so she can get a life, so she can get out there. And she enlists like the handyman in her um, apartment building named Red to help do them. And it kind of ensues in a romance from there. I really enjoy this one. It was cute. I would highly recommend. Again, it does have some steamy parts in it just so you're aware in case you don't like that. Totally understandable, but I thought I would share that. But again, it was cute. It was fluffy. I liked it a lot. Next we have Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Steve Otter. This is her first book in a new series, the Dreamer series. I don't know how many books it's going to be, but basically it's kind of a spinoff of The Raven Cycle by her, which I have read and really loved. In this book, we followed the character Ronan, who was very present in The Raven Cycle. Overall, like I said, I gave this book a four out of five. This felt very reminiscent of The Raven Boys, in my opinion, because while I love The Raven Boys, I attest to time and time again that the first 200 pages of The Raven Boys, maybe the first 100 pages, are just very slow to get through because there's just so much building and you just don't understand because I love Maggie Seabarter's writing but it is confusing it's just it's always has been to me and it always will be it's like I love it but like half the time I'm like I don't know what I'm reading maybe that's just my own stupidity I don't know but I felt the same way with the Raven Boys much like I felt with Caught on the Hawk. Caught on the Hawk um took me about 150 pages to get into it and I really enjoyed it after that um I love the fact that it's about Ronan because Ronan is a very mysterious and elusive character that I want to learn more about. You definitely got that in this book. Um, we also follow his two other brothers really frequently as well. Declan, who I did not think Maggie Steve Outer could ever write to where I enjoyed him, but she did in this book, so props to her. A whole new set of like three other characters we follow that we have never met before, but I would say a lot of people have said you can read this without reading The Raven Cycle. And I don't know if I would agree with that because there's so many, there's just so much backstory about Ronan and even Declan in the Raven Cycle that you just don't want to miss because you'll miss so much of growth that Ronan has already done in the Raven Cycle that you're going to see even more in her 
dreamer series. And also Gansey's mentioned in this book very briefly. If you would read it for the first time and not read The Raven Cycle, you'd be like, who's Gansey? If you read The Raven Cycle, you'll know tons about it. There's Adam in this book very briefly. If you read The Raven Cycle, you learn a whole bunch more about Adam. So overall, I gave it a four out of five. I think I also gave The Raven Boys a four out of five, but I love the ending. I love the plot that it has. I wish they had different covers, I'll say that. But I am excited to see where this series is gonna go and I can only hope that you know, more people from The Raven Cycle pop up and, you know, make an appearance because that would make my heart so, so happy. I have not filmed a single review on this. If you want that, let me know. I just don't know if I should or not because, like I said, a lot of times, especially with her Raven Cycle series and this one, there's so much context in the book that I just miss, honestly. Like, like the, I love The Raven Cycle, but it still confounds me to this day with all, like, the analogies and, like, the hidden meanings, and I still don't quite grasp it, and I feel like the same way is gonna happen with this series. Nevertheless, I'll still read it and probably love it. Next up, we have Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the third and final book in the Air of the Folk series. I have read the first two. I have reviews on them, which I will link down below and up here. Um, this one I don't think is my favorite. I think my favorite in the series is going to be The Wicked King, which usually the middle book in a series is not my favorite at all, but I'm surprised as much as you are. The third book, this one, was okay. I didn't love it. I gave it a four out of five. The first two I gave a five out of five. I just, I don't know. I wanted it to be longer. I felt like she really cut a lot out of it so she could write it very quickly because I believe The Wicked King also came out this year. Like, I think it came out in January and, and this one's already been released in November. So I felt like she kind of rushed it. I felt like it could have been more. I wanted more Jude and Cardin. We didn't get nearly enough of them in this book at all because this is a very short book. It's like 300 pages and the other two aren't very long as well, but they're longer than this. Maybe I'm the only one that feels that way, but I liked it. I didn't love it. Like I, if it was longer and was more in depth, I would have. I call these books guilty pleasure books. I don't think there's much in them, honestly, but I still come back for them. This whole series is about a character named Jude who is mortal and she learns that her half, she learns that her sister is like actually half fairy and that her mom was married to a fairy and then the guy comes and kills her mom and her step and her dad and he whisks all of her sisters off and her to fairyland. And so she grows up with her twin sister that are both mortals in the fairyland and then her other sister who is actually half fairy and the fairyland so she wants to be really she loves fairyland but it's very cutthroat there they're evil they're manipulative but she really wants to make something of herself in fairyland so that's the whole book and then she has a hate to hate relationship with Cardin, the prince of fairy and it's just a guilty pleasure book i like it would recommend it but i just wanted more from it like i wish it was longer i wish it had more in-depth stuff but maybe that's just my opinion also if you want a single review on this one i feel like i should probably do it because i've already done the first two so i feel like i definitely should I'll probably do it, so be on the lookout for that soon. Next up, we have The How and Why by Cynthia Hand. This is a Y contemporary that I thought was gonna come out of the woodwork and become my favorite book of the year. Sadly, it didn't. I gave it a four out of five, which is not bad at all, but I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. But the premise of this book is just, it's there. So basically, we have a character named Kath, um, we have a character named Cassandra. She's adopted and she's about to turn 18. And then she tries to learn more about her birth mother because she doesn't know anything about her birth mother. And then she figures out that she has access to all of these letters that her mother actually wrote to her when she was still in the womb because her mother was part of this like um, adoptive birth thing where she could write letters to her um, unborn daughter and then if her unborn daughter ever wants to read them one day she totally can. So two sets of timelines in this book. We have one where now where Cassandra's trying to figure out who her birth mother is while also staying true to her adoptive parents that she loves so much. And then also we go back in time to 18 years ago when Cassandra's mother was writing these letters and pouring her heart out to who she is and why she's healing up for adoption. So I really enjoyed it. It was very reminiscent of um, Far From the Tree by Robin Benway, which is another book I love. This is a quiet type of contemporary book where it's really character driven and it's really about the character, not so much about the plot, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless. Cynthia Hand is a great writer and I'll read all her books honestly because I love them. But this one, I think if it had a little bit more of an emotional impact, which I feel like it already did, I would have really, really loved it and would have given it a five out of five, but it just wasn't quite there for me. But I still would highly recommend it because I love the adoption talk. I love the 
the her trying to find her birth mother also the timeline thing was amazing as well so yeah I think a lot of people sleep on I think a lot of people are sleeping on this book but I think you should definitely check it out because it's a beautiful book downright it's a beautiful book all right the last two books I want to share with you I do have single reviews on the first one being The Toll by Neil Schuster and this is the third and final book in the Ark of the Size series this thing is a beast <laughs> it's like 640 pages so I'm not going to go into too much of it because my review was like 20 minutes long so you guys know I love the Ark of the Size series it's one of my favorite series it's definitely very hyped here on booktube but with good reason because it is a very good series so in the third book we have a lot of things come into a culmination and things like that overall I did really enjoy it. The first 200 pages were very slow in my opinion and I really trudged through them and I was very nervous when I was reading them because I was like crap I'm not following this book but after that it was amazing. It was very action-packed, very plot driven and I really loved it. The ending came very very quickly as well so I have a lot of feelings about this series. Um, I still think Thunderhead might be my favorite book in this series. I, I don't know. This is the second time I'm saying the second book in a series is my favorite which is so unlike me but Thunderhead was just like I just remember I really enjoyed Scythe and it wasn't quite there for me but Thunderhead like it was like wow it was amazing. The Toll delivers but I wanted more from it and I felt like there could have been more with Rowan as a character. He really got he really did not get any growth at all or any page like any sort of screen time if you will in this book which I was disappointed with and the ending just happened way too quickly and the beginning took way too long to get there. We also were introduced to characters that had never been in the series before and they got so much like I don't know I don't I keep saying screen time but you know what I'm saying that's why I'm saying it. They got screen time that I was like I don't know who you are and I don't care because you're in the last book of a series so why should I care about you? I want to read about the characters I already know and love. So it is bold to bring in like new characters in the very last book of a series but I liked it. I didn't like it. Again if you want to hear a really in-depth talk about what I thought about it check out my review. And my favorite book of the month was Supernova by Marissa Meyer. I think I'm giving this one a 5 out of 5 because I just had such a good time reading this. This is also the third and final book in the Renegades trilogy which I also have single reviews on as well. So if you want to hear more about what I thought about this book I will leave the card up here and down below. So um, you guys know I love the Renegades trilogy. It's a fun series. I always compare it to Marvel and superhero because it is a superhero trilogy. In this world we have these heroes called Renegades that have powers. We have anarchists who are kind of the villains of the story. And we have Nova who is an anarchist and she's trying to infiltrate the Renegades. So she disguises herself as a renegade and things get kind of blurred lines like that. Renegades the first book is a fun book. It's my favorite in the series. I'll say that right now. It always will be. Um, I loved it because it's got the kapow bam it's you know the characters have powers and I really enjoy their powers. And then Arch Enemies came out and I um, I feel like I'm not I don't know I feel like a lot of people really like that book but I am one that was like I don't even think that Book was a ton necessary because if I'm not mistaken this series was meant to be a duology and then I think Renegades got so popular and that people loved it that Marissa Meyer or maybe her publishers I don't quite know the exact thing said hey let's make this a trilogy because we have a lot of people interested in it and then so that's why I think we're Arch Enemies kind of falls because that book just was a filler book. Like there are some trilogies where the second book's amazing, like the folk series that are and catching and even Hunger Games that are just the second books are amazing. And then we have a lot of series or trilogies that the second book is just there for filler to get you to the last book. And that is exactly what I think about Arch Enemies. But we're not here to talk about Arch Enemies. We're here to talk about Supernova. I enjoyed it. I thought as a final book, it delivered. The ending was great. The twist at the end, I loved it. I think she will be coming back to this world. If so, I am here for it because it's just a fun superhero book that I just really enjoy and have a fun time reading. This is as fun series as I always will say about it. So yeah, it's my favorite book of the month. I really liked it and I was very nervous about it because of Arch Enemies. We all know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, these are all the books that I read in November, which if you look at it, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy about because these two were like really big books. So, and this one's even kind of big as well. So overall, I think I did really good for November. I have to read 10 books in December in order to reach my 100 book goal on Goodreads. I don't think that's going to happen, but you know what? This year, I'm okay with it. So I would love to hear if you've read any of these books and share with me your thoughts down below. Again, if you want a Call Down the Hawk book review, please also let me know. I will be filming my Queen of Nothing review very, very soon, hopefully. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.